So thanks for joining me for this exciting video. This is the official release of the design that I have for a dry fire trigger device to simulate a realistic trigger pull in a firearm. And then I'm going to go into talking about how I integrated that design into the XR pistol, which is available now as well. So right here is an internal exploded view of what you have inside of here. And so, as a reference, we're going to take a look at that here inside the XR pistol. So, this trigger has a lever that goes up onto here. And so, right here is the part that's right here running up against there. The force of the screw that is over on this side pushing in like this is what determines how heavy oh, the trigger pull is for this brake. And then, when we have our reset. And this screw here is what determines the length of pull. So if I was going to go and tighten this, let's say that I wanted to have a really short reset on here. So I'm going to go up to the point where it just breaks right past here but before the reset. And that's where I'd have the set screw set at. So if I bring this up to here. So there's a very, very short reset because as soon as that happens, it's stopping. And so that's this screw here that's determining that pull strength, whereas this screw is determining the over travel after it breaks. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll back that out a little bit here. So let's say that we wanted to have a much lighter break. Because you can see here when you watch, and I guess I'll go ahead and run our trigger pull rating on there first as well. This is probably sitting up around four and a half pounds or so. So there we should be ready for our pull. And with the flat ones not curved, I'm not exactly sure the correct way to do this. So I'll go ahead and just brace this down while I pull and then show you the reading after. So pull, 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 break. Yeah, so that was Four pounds seven ounces. We'll do one more reading on here. And up to the break, and that was 3.14. Of course, this is moving around. This is a horribly inefficient way to try to read that, but reading off of just here where I don't have to worry about the rolling, it's a very consistent break every single time like that. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'll back out these screws so that we can go to a much lighter weight that's on here. And there we go to this. And so this is our reset weight here. So this does affect the initial pull weight some, but you're sort of looking for an equilibrium between both of those. So now this is a much, much, much lighter pull. So we'll go, we'll get a reading off here. And there's our break. It was just over one pound like this. And the wall. And then the break. So what I really wanted was a simple, reliable trigger pack that could be set up, put into this design, other designs I'm working on, that doesn't require any special tools, any special parts that you could get anywhere to make training devices with. So if we look at this laser shot here that I've taken the slide off of, the way that this works is as you pull the trigger, this part goes back and these both custom formed metal pieces are where the sear is up until the point that it's no longer able to hold this back, that resets, it comes over right like that. And so I didn't want to approach in any sort of way similar to that. Plus, I wanted to create something that I could release to the community to be used for training, provide value there. And as I said at the start of the video, I think this is all MIT licensed. If somebody wants to make something, sell something with this type of trigger pack in, and MIT license is anything. You can use this for personal projects, for commercial use, and it's just putting this out for the benefit of the community. Now, I'm using it in this design. I'll be using it in my others. Sure, if you come up with improvements to this, commit the, uh, submit those in 
and let the community use this. Or don't. That's how the license works. So I wanted to be able to release this design because, well, for one, I'm a small indie, and it's not like I could legally protect anything like this anyway. Never would be able to go after anybody if I had any desire to do that. But from the personal value, there is benefit to this being in the community. Hopefully the FOSCAD community will pick this up. They'll make different draft fire trigger packs for other devices that have been made. So then we can up the level of training across the board. So with that integrated in here, this makes it so that I'm able to have realistic training in the augmented reality software platform that I'm working on. So the other update that I was going to do in this video is the weighted magazine design. So this is printed as a single piece in TPU. There's two pieces of steel bar stock in here. I forget the dimensions offhand, but they both stop right up around here. This is filled with epoxy right here, but I'm going to be using some plugs later so I can use less epoxy in that final design. I broke a ton of TPU and ABS modules. So the ABS would shear and the TPU would shatter. So I've been doing drop tests like three, four feet of these on concrete. And these have had no issues whatsoever, which is the design I ended up going with. And so with the weighted mags, these are, I think maybe a few ounces short of a full 17 round that's loaded up. But functionally, they've been really useful. And so this is the rod right there. You'll see when the magazine goes in and out. This is our state tracking for magazine state. We've got our state tracking for slide rack. We've got our weapon light activating over here. And of course, trigger right there. So I have more in-depth design videos on all of that that are out on the channel as well. This, I really just wanted to get into the designs of this, so if anybody else is looking for something like this, they understand the principles there. I will have up on the GitHub and Thingiverse and all the other places wherever this ends up being posted. You'll be able to just look at this model as well, rip out whatever parts you want to use in other projects. And there it is. Uh, go ahead and leave some comments in the video. Maybe that'll help get some more people to see it. And I'd love to see what everybody's going to make. Have a good one.